What's going on Clarity Coders? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a Discord bot from scratch, line by line. By the end of it, you'll have a bot that can give witty responses and understand commands. Most tutorials I've seen online for this take around an hour. We're gonna do it in 17 minutes. And at the end of it, I will give you a special code that you can host it and run it online for free. So stick with me. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Alright, so let's get started here. The first thing you're going to do if you don't have a Discord account is go ahead and sign up for one here. You can click register. I'm not going to walk you through this. You can do that on your own. It's pretty simple. Once you're finished, you're going to come to a window that looks like this. You can see mine has the plus symbol with an exclamation point in the top corner. You're going to click that. You can click skip all tutorials. And we'll push it again to add our server. We're going to create my own for my friends and family. You can give the server a name and push create. Now you can see here it gives us two starter channels, a general text channel and a general voice channel. We can send a message here in the bottom, just say hi or something like that. And we got everything set up. Now to get started, we're going to head over to the Discord developer portal. The link will be in the description. I googled it and came to this page here. I'm going to click on applications and then new application. You can give your application a name, whatever you would like. I'll just do clarity tutorial or something along those lines. And then we're gonna push create. Now on here, we have some values that we're gonna use. We're gonna go ahead and flip to the bot tab here and click add bot. Yes, do it. You can name your bot. And up at the top, we're gonna copy this token. Now this token obviously is sensitive. You don't wanna share it with other people or else they can control your bot. If it does get out in the open somehow, you can click the regenerate button beside it and then you'll have a new token so no one will have access to your bot again. We're gonna flip over to OAuth2. Under scopes, we're gonna select bot. Then we're gonna scroll down to bot permissions. We're gonna give it most of the text permissions so we can go ahead and start clicking those. You can click whatever your bot intends to do and then over in the other one, I'm gonna give it the ability to kick members, ban members, and it'll need to view channels. Once this is done, we're gonna to need to copy that link, but before we do that, cause we still have our token, let's open up Notepad and paste in our token here. I'm obviously going to regenerate mine, so you can't use mine. You'll have to use your own. We're just going to paste that in there for later. And then we'll copy this invite URL. So this is going to allow us to actually join our bot to our Discord server. So we'll copy that. Then we can paste it into the browser. You'll select your server that you created, and you'll hit continue. You should see the permissions that we selected from before and you can hit authorize. I am a human, so I'm gonna check that. Now, if we go over here, you'll see our bot is offline, but it is on the server now. So now we can go ahead and start coding our bot. Now I'm gonna use Replit, you don't have to, you can use whatever you would like. I'm using Replit simply because it is the cheapest and easiest way to kind of host your bot online 24 7. So I'm going to have a link in the description for a code that will get you a free always on server as well. So check that out. So we're going to open another tab. We'll go to replit.com. You can log in from here. If you don't have an account, you can go ahead and register. It's free. I'm going to sign into mine. Once you get all signed in, you should come to a page like this. We can hit the plus button, select our language, which is Python. You can call this replit whatever you want. I'll have the link to mine if you want to grab my code. And then you'll come to a page that looks like this. Now I'm going to do some quick edits real quick here just to make my font bigger and stuff so it's a little easier for you guys to see. So we're going to import Discord. This is going to be the library that we use to work with our Discord bot. From here, we're going to set up a client. So we're going to say client equals discord.client, note that's client with a capital C. Now we can set up some asynchronous functions here. So we're gonna say client.event, so we're listening for an event here, and it's an asynchronous function. We're gonna define that as on underscore ready. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna listen for our bot to be ready, 
and logged in. And then this function will run once it's logged in. So to see if this is working, we can just print out something. I'm gonna print out an F string here just because I'm gonna sub in our bot's name. Inside curly brackets, so we can use variables inside curly brackets of an F string. We can say client dot user space outside of the curly brackets we'll say logged in now so now it should tell us when our bots logged in now one thing you might run into here is if you run this now you're going to see there are some issues right so it's going to look like it works it's going to install our packages no if you're not on replit you would have had to do pip install discord on yourself but replit takes care of that for us so you'll see it ran it stopped running and it didn't print anything out. This trips people up all the time when they use functions. Now it didn't actually run that function because we didn't call it and we're not listening for any events. We just defined an event. So what we need to do now is we need to actually set up our bot to run and listen for events. So we're gonna go over to the secrets tab. We're gonna name our secret for the key. We're gonna name it token. And for the value, we're gonna paste in the value that we copied into Notepad. If you don't have this, you can head back over to the developer, Discord developer page and get this again. And we're gonna paste that into value. If you're doing this locally, you can create a .env file for your secrets. Now you can see below, they have some cheater code here that we can insert. So we're gonna import OS and then we're gonna insert my secret. And it's just gonna pull that variable out of the token. Now, why are we putting this in secrets? because replets by default are public and we don't want that secret getting out. So we're gonna hide it in that secrets file. So now we can do client.run my secret. Now our bot should actually stay running and you can see it spit out that it is logged in now. And you'll notice that the program is still running. So our bot's sitting online and it's waiting or in our case, nothing, because we don't have any other events. So we just did on ready. So we're gonna add another event that runs when a message is sent anywhere on our server. So this is gonna look similar. I'm gonna do at client event. And this time I'm going to do an asynchronous function again. I'm gonna define it as on message, on underscore message. And it's going to give us a message object so when someone sends a message, this function is gonna run and it's gonna give us a message object. Now you can look at the documentation for this and I'll link that below if you're wondering how I found out what attributes are on this. So I can do message.content and it's gonna spit out the message to our console below. Now if you don't wanna look at the documentation and you're curious what other attributes and functions a message might have, we can print that out below as well. So let's do print, and then this time we're gonna do dir, and inside of it we're gonna pass in message, and it'll show us the attributes and functions on that message object. So once this runs, you'll notice it says it's logged in and nothing happened. That's because we didn't send a message. So let's go over here, and we'll send a message, and that should trigger that function to run. So if we go back to our replet here, you can see that it did spit the message out into the console, and it also spit out a bunch of attributes and functions on the message itself. So from here, some of these are named intuitively, so we can kind of figure out what they're doing. For example, you'll see that there is a delete below here. So if we wanted to skip the documentation and just try to figure it out on our own, we could try to delete messages. Now, something that a lot of people do is message.delete. I'm guessing this is a function, so this won't give us an error if we run it, but it's probably also not going to delete our message. So let's just give that a try just to show uh, some things that trip people up from time to time. So if we run this, you'll notice we get logged in. Awesome. Let's go ahead and trigger this function by sending a message. Remember, it doesn't run unless we send a message. And you'll notice it didn't delete our message, so already we have a red flag there. And the function did run because it's got the message and the attributes below, but delete did not work. That's because this is actually a function. So let's go ahead and run it with parentheses like a function. This is going to probably not work either, but it's gonna give us an error that's a little easier to debug. So let's go back and we'll send another message. 
Now, if we go back to our replic code, you'll see that we do have a warning this time. Now with asynchronous functions, if we have a blocking request, we're gonna have to await the response. So this is an error you get a lot when you're working with asynchronous functions. So you wanna know what it looks like. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to await the response from our message.delete, and that should now work correctly. So now essentially when anyone sends a message in our server, we automatically delete it. So we have created the most useless Discord server imaginable. Let's say hello bot, delete me, and you can see it instantly deleted the message. And you'll see our code ran here. So now let's try and do something a little more common and a little more useful. You'll see a lot of times people look out for commands for bots. You'll do a symbol and then some text and then the bot will do something. So what we're going to do is anytime someone sends a message, we're going to say if message.content dot starts with you can pick whatever you want here. We'll say dollar sign greet. So now this if condition is going to run if someone sends a message that starts with dollar sign greet. So we're gonna do message dot channel. So this grabs the channel from the message. So wherever they sent the message is where we're going to send this. So we're gonna do message dot channel dot send. And then you can do anything you want here string wise. So you could send an F string, you could send a variable that's a string, whatever you want. In our case, we're going to send a greeting. So we'll say something like, hello, how are you? Let's personalize this a little bit. So let's make this an F string. So we're going to use curly brackets and put the F before the string. And we can do message.author. So now if we go back and we use our command here, if we just say greet, it's obviously not going to work. Let's do dollar sign greet. And again, it's not gonna work. As you can imagine, we hit that same error we had before. So we're gonna need to await this response as well. So now if we go back and try to run it again, you can see that was successful. So now I'm gonna drag in a CSV file so we can do something a little cooler. You can get this from my replit or the GitHub. And we're gonna try and make a bot that gives some witty responses. And I'll open this up really quick so you can see it. What I did was I scraped Reddit shower thoughts for some witty phrases that we can paste into our code when our bot gets a request. So for example, falling down or getting hit by the entire planet is the same thing. So we're gonna import a couple more libraries here to accomplish this. So up above, let's import CSV. So this is gonna allow us to read in that CSV. Let's create a list. So we'll say phrases equals, and we'll just do a blank list for right now. And now let's open that CSV. So let's do with open phrases.csv as CSV underscore file. Now we can do csv underscore reader equals csv dot reader. We can pass in that csv underscore file. And we can say our delimiter is going to be commas. And that's just based on the file itself. So we'll say for row in csv underscore reader. And then we can do phrases dot append our row. And we're going to grab out the index, so square brackets one for our index. The first one was like a username and then the one index was like a phrase. So if we run this, you'll see I have an error here because I can't spell, spelled delimiter wrong. So let's change that to E to an I. Now, if we run this, it's obviously not gonna work yet or actually send phrases, but we can see that there's at least no errors. So we can stop this. We need to import one more library. Let's import random. So this is gonna allow it to randomly select one of the phrases out of our list. This is gonna be a little different. I'll show you another way to do this. Let's say else if. Let's make whatever we want our command to be. So let's say, as a string, let's say dollar sign thought. 
in message.content. So now anywhere in message, in the message they send, if they have dollar sign thought, it's going to run this if statement. Now remember, this is only if it's lowercase, so you could do dot lower or something if you want it to be for everything. So we're gonna copy the line from above, await message.channel.send, and actually I'll do a variable above just to make this a little easier to read. So let's say response equals phrases. Out of phrases, we're gonna use square brackets so we can get an index. We're gonna say random.randint, so this is gonna give us a random integer from zero, which is the starting index to the length of phrases minus one. And then we're going to send that response, whatever it is. So if we run this code again, you'll see hopefully we have no errors. We don't. Now let's go back to our server. And from here we can do dollar sign greet me. And of course this still works because it still starts with dollar sign greet. And then we can do dollar sign thought. And as you can see, it spits out a random shower thought. There are probably kickballs jammed in some school gym ceilings somewhere that have been stuck there since 1970. <laughs> Perfect. And that's as simple as that. We have our working Discord bot that's up and running. Now, Replit, this will fall asleep after a certain period of time. I have a link in the description below for you to get always on for free for six months, I think. So I'll post that. Go ahead and click it. If this link stops working in the future, let me know and I'll post a new one. So if we want this to run 24 seven, we'll click this. After you sign up on that link, you should have an always on tick mark here. You can tick that and it will stay alive and awake and running. If you like this video and these tutorials, it really helps the channel if you subscribe. I would really appreciate it if you did. Hit that subscribe button in the bottom and the bell so you don't miss any notifications. If you wanna see a special video, Post in the comments below. I have a tendency to make videos based on what the comments are. So let me know what you would like to see from your Discord bot or whatever you're working on. And I'll get to that as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep coding.